the Tories have been in power for 13 years. They've allowed uh, woke ideology to hijack so many of our institutions. And we've got a situation where a generation of young people and, and the next generation of, of children coming through are in danger of being uh, essentially uh, growing up uh, as as snowflakes who are not robust, who are not resilient, and uh, are not used to accepting that you get some knocks in life. Uh, and so that brings us on to something that we feel very strongly about, which is the education of our children. And I talked on it, I touched on it last week on my, uh, my radio show last Sunday, Easter Sunday. And I was talking about the traditional education of teaching children how to read, write, count, and uh, do things like history and science and other important things, as opposed to uh, what's happening, which shouldn't be happening in schools, is things like lessons on gender questioning uh, and uh, having lots of drag queen in, in, uh, in lessons and things. And, and we absolutely stand rock solid firm against this because uh, I think it's, it's really, really uh, important. And to talk about this stuff with children in primary schools or in their early teens when they've got all sorts of things going on with their bodies anyway, I think it makes children anxious. I think it confuses children. As such, I think it's damaging to children. And as such, here's the crux. Unlike Rishi Sunak that thinks, oh, let's have an urgent review on this stuff. Uh, and his definition of urgent is, please give me a report on my desk by the end of the year, which in civil service language means the end of the following year. But I don't need a civil servant to give me a report on this stuff. I know the difference between right and wrong. I can tell you within a week that this is a safeguarding breach under existing safeguarding laws. And if I was running Ofsted or running the country, I would make it very clear to every head of every single primary and secondary school under the age of 16, there is no teaching of this stuff. And if there is, you're in breach of safeguarding, you'll probably lose your job. It's not good enough. It's unacceptable. So so your answer to how we get rid of wokeness from institutions is basically a sort of hardline approach, because you spoke earlier about if, if I was in the if I was in government, I'd just tell the civil service to get in line, hit these targets or you're sacked. But we have had people like, for example, Savid Javid, Sajid Javid seems to have done quite well in business. Rishi Sunak seems to have as well and be quite a competent person. But they get in there and they find that the blob, and I know people in the extended blob like the Bank of England and other institutions, and they all hate the Tories and so on. They're all sort of ra quite radically left now, strangely, even though they're sort of would have been neoliberals not long ago. So it's a very strange kind of, they've adopted woke ideology. And they're so against the government that they can't get anything done. But how is it that you would, you've got a great business background, but so have some of these people. How would, it, how would you come in and sort of get rid of wokeness from all these institutions? Because they didn't fight hard enough. I mean, take Sajid Javid, a nice guy, I know Sajid. But the reality is that he, he always got turned. He allowed himself to be turned as opposed to, uh, you know, making it clear who was the boss. And these people were elected on an 80 seat majority with, uh, you, you've, you've just got, in our manifesto, it will be abundantly clear. This is the plan. This is what's going to happen. There is a structural problem which needs to change, which is we should some, have a, a situation where when a cabinet, uh, a new Secretary of State is appointed, they can bring in 10, 15, 20 senior people from the private sector to help run that department and, and to drive through this stuff. And it should be within our, within our, our culture that if you're called to public service, rather like in the States, it's a public duty. If you've been successful in any walk of life, if you're called to give service for three or four years uh, to, to your country, then that's what you do. And it's a matter of, of patriotic pride. And we should have that here in the UK. Whereas instead, we've got two like parallel railway lines between the private sector and the public sector and almost very, very little crossover. So uh, that's one of the things that I think needs to happen but it just requires absolute rigid determination. And look, I said earlier, uh, to make an omelette, you've got to break some eggs. And to get this done, a whole bunch of people have to be fired. But it is so serious. Mm. I, I'm just in the business of telling it as it is. And if you don't like it, frankly, go and get another job.